Hey guys, uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about today's uh, EPL soccer slate. It's a four game slate, um, so it's a pretty loaded slate actually. Uh, and it's, it's a slate where there's one decent favorite um, and then the rest of them are pretty close games. Um, so there's no Man City, there's no Liverpool, there's no Chelsea. Uh, Manchester United, as you can see here, is the only uh, fav big favorite on the slate. And as you know, Man U has been struggling lately, so I don't think they deserve these odds, but, you know, given what it's worth. Uh, so given all of that, um, uh, it's a very close uh, matchup, so I think the analysis is more important than ever. So, yeah, let's dive in. So first, I'll dive into the Brentford versus Newcastle United. Um, Brentford has been struggling uh, lately. They've been in really bad form, uh, but Newcastle United actually has been in really good form lately. So I, there's a good chance, really good chance that Newcastle can win this outright, um, if not tie the game. So I think Newcastle, to me, is going to dominate the possession. I think it's going to be 50-50 uh, if I have to guess, but there's a good chance that Newcastle can dominate possession because they've been in better form. Um, but Brentford should should be getting back Ivan Tony and then um, Christian Eriksen, I believe, uh, he may start. So uh, that should bolster Brentford's uh, chances to win as well. But I just like Newcastle's recent form much better. Um, let me see if I made any notes here. Yeah, so Brentford. Uh, yeah, they Brentford, like I said, Brentford struggles to score. Newcastle's playing much better. Um, I like both teams to score today. Like I said, Brentford's getting back those players um, today. Uh, that should help, help out with the attack. Um, and then, so yeah, like I said, Newcastle can win now, right? So let's, let's dive into Newcastle, who's been in better form. Um, my favorite plays would be here, Ryan Frazier, um, and then John Joe Shelby if these lineups, uh, you know, are the starters. As you guys know, the starters come out at 9 a.m. Eastern time, which is one hour before kickoff. Uh, so, yeah, look out for that, and I'll share my thoughts on the starters once once they're confirmed um, and the formation they come out with um, in the Discord channel. So Ryan Frazier, John Joe Shelby, I think those are probably the – and then maybe Matt Target. Those are probably the – the three high higher floor guys, um, but Frazier is my favorite. And then for GPP, definitely Chris Wood or Jacob Murphy, and then maybe Joe Willock. Um, so those are probably my top three GPP guys for Newcastle. And then for Brentford, um, as mentioned, uh, Ivan Tony, if he's back, um, I like him to score. And then for uh, that's for GPP. For cash, um, Brian Buemo and then Serge Canos, um, uh, Janelt, and then Rico Henry. Um, Canos and Janelt um, and Henry have a lot of crossing upside, so that's why I have them. And Buemo tends to create a lot of chances uh, for that team, so those are some good plays for uh, Brentford. Let's look at the second matchup on this slate, which is uh, BHA versus Aston Villa. Um, BHA is at home and they're a, a favorite at plus 115 <clears throat> to win outright. Um, BHA has been um, struggling to score and then Aston Villa has been struggling, not only struggling to score, but in bad form. Um, so I do think this game is gonna be under and, and end up at under 2.5 goals, which is set at total goals over under. Um, so I, I, yeah, I mean, I think BHA should dominate possession here, but Aston Villa has the upside to do it. It's just, they haven't been able to, you know, um, do so execute the game plan and such. I mean, based on their talent, it should be much better, um, but they've been in really bad form and struggling to score, um, but BHA has been as well. So, um, but I do like BHA's uh, pieces today because they, um, Aston Villa likes, you know, they, their their defense is not very good. So for BHA, I think that my top guys are McAllister and then um, the top two fullbacks here. 
uh, Cucurella and Lamptey. I like Lamptey much better today um, because he's got to go up against here where Coutinho and Nadine, they like to go up and down. So I like that space between, behind them for Lamptey to kind of sneak through and then cross the ball. Uh, so I love Lamptey, McAllister, and then Cucurella. That's for cash. Um, and then they have upside too for GPP. But strictly for GPP, I like Troussard. Um, and then Malpay will be cheaper. So um, those are probably my two top two guys. And then maybe Bissouma, uh, if you are trying to save on the salary. For Aston Villa, though, that's a very really tricky one because uh, they share set pieces. Um, and I don't exactly know who they're going to start given their struggle recently. Um, but if <clears throat> this is the starting lineup, I would probably have to favor uh, Buendia because of the goal upside and chances created for him. And then Coutinho, um, he doesn't really take set pieces, but sometimes he does. And he, he um, there's a good chance that he might, uh, given the struggle, they might change it up. But Coutinho has a lot of goal upside, chances created upside as well. So the top two guys here, Buendia and Coutinho. And then for set pieces, I mean, Luis has been taking them. McGinn has been taking them. Dinia could take them. So really, I mean, it's all spread it out. But obviously those guys could be on the end of an assist or a goal. Um, but yeah, those are the top two, top three guys I'm interested in. McGinn, Luis, and Dinia. All right. So I think that's going to be under 2.5 goals. So I think more importantly, higher floor guys are probably what I'm going to play. Um, like I said, McAllister, Gugurella, Lamptey um, for BHA, and then maybe for Aston Villa, maybe uh, Buendia or Coutinho. So we'll see where that leads us. The third matchup of the day is Crystal Palace versus Burnley. Um, this is a very interesting matchup because Crystal Palace actually was struggling, but then he, they look really so much better in that last game. Out. They scored four goals, I believe. Zaha had a brace, I believe, um, two goals he scored. Um, but I do think Burnley, this is a very important game for Burnley because they could be out of the bottom three, depending on the results, if they get a point here today or three points by winning the game. Uh, so I think it's a very important game for Burnley, but they're on the road and Crystal Palace is at home and they've been playing much better. So I do think Crystal Palace should um, should dominate possession, but Crystal Palace also doesn't like to do that. I mean, they they operate on a more of a counterattack um, strategy. So I think it's going to be more 50-50, but Crystal Palace, I think, has a higher chance to score, um, in my opinion. So for them, it all starts with Zaha and then Gallagher. Gallagher used to take a lot of set pieces, but then he kind of conceded them uh, to some of their players like Luka Milovanic and then Will Hughes. Uh, but at the end of the day, he is their engine. Um, he played really well last game. Um, he got a goal last game as well. Um, and then Zaha played amazing last game too. So I think those are the top two guys, Zaha and Gallagher. And then for GPP, I mean, you can play Mateta. Um, he is a, playing the striker position. Obviously, he scored last time out but he didn't do much any you know anything else uh but then and then olise as he's like a borderline cash gpp line uh play in my opinion because he likes to create chances but he doesn't get the ball as much as zaha or gallagher so i think those are probably my top two guys and then mitchell i mean i think he did okay last game i know he got an assist um mitchell and klein these two fullbacks um but they're just not that hard they're just um, hard to trust um, for them to have enough volume to cross the ball. Um, I think as fullbacks, you kind of need to have that kind of upside to play uh, for DFS purposes. Um, so, uh, you know, but if the salary, you know, it requires you to go down to them, I think you it's viable to do that. And then for Brindley, like I said, they've been struggling. Um, but for them, it all starts with McNeil. Uh, McNeil is their best player, and he, you know, crossed the ball. He does a lot of set pieces and chances created. And then after that, I, I think it it's more all for more GPP. I mean, I think uh, Jay, Jay Rodriguez is a minimal striker, minimal priced striker. And then Whitehorst, if he starts again, I mean, I think he will. Um, he's a big um, signing for Burnley, but. Um, I know he played well in some games, but then he, um, 
you know, doesn't show up in some games. So it's really a hit or miss thing for a Wake Forest. And then um, I, I don't think I'm going to play Aaron Lennon. I know he had that one good game, but I don't trust the guy. He's 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 more of a veteran and he's old and I don't think I don't really like his upside. And then Connor Roberts and Eric Peters. I mean, I think Roberts is good and then Peters is good. It's just that they don't cross the ball enough, just like the counterparts uh, fullbacks as well. It's the same same dilemma we have, um, whether there's enough crossing volume for those two guys, but I think it's viable. Um, there's not much of a kill, I mean, not kill, goal upside for those guys. So, so yeah, that's all I got for Brendan I do think it's going to be a very tight matchup, like I said, um, lots of cards to be expected. So, um, especially on the Burnley side, I think, like I said, this is a very important matchup for Burnley. Um, so I think um, Crystal Palace um, players will get fouled a lot. And I think that's a good um, thing in mind to have in mind when you are playing Crystal Palace players. All right, the last matchup is the, according to Vegas odds, the most lopsided, one-sided matchup. Um, Man U is at, well, odds changed a little bit, at minus 278 at home to win outright. Um, but Man U has been struggling up and down so much. I mean, they, they, they've they just been really bad and good and bad and good, and it's really hard to trust them, you know. So and they're still, at the end of the day, they're still in top four. They're pushing to be in top three. Um, it can happen if they get, you know, pick up their slack. Um, I do think this is going to be their starting lineup, um, just given how they played last game. But their their schedule is real busy. I mean, they still have another Champions League game, and they have uh, they had two games uh, this past week already. Um, but Watford on the other side, I mean, they're a hit or miss as well. But they they also have the upside to beat Man U, in my opinion. I think when Dennis. Sar and then was it Lauza? Yeah, Lauza. If they play really well, I mean, they can beat anybody in the EPL, I think. So this could be a trap game for Man U, even though the odds indicate that they're going to win um, outright. Um, I think just given the, the schedule, the busy schedule, and then the tired legs, I think Watford has a good chance. Um, but let's dive into Man U. I think the safer choice would be to play Man U guys, right? Like on the slate, because they're the biggest favorite. Um, and most people will do that. But I think for GPP, they're definitely fadeable. Uh, but for high floor guys for Man U, it's always starts with it always starts with Bruno Fernandez and then uh, Luke Shaw. Uh, they both so take set pieces, and then Bruno is obviously has a lot more goal upside. Um, and then for GPP, it all, you know, starts with Cristiano Ronaldo. Like, do you want to roster him? Do you think he'll score so far? I mean, they've just been looking out of sorts with Ronaldo in the lineup. So I do not think he has the upside to score like two, three goals and break the slate. So I may fade him. I'm definitely going to fade him in cash because he doesn't really have a floor. He doesn't really touch the ball that much even during the game. All he really does is good for it right now is to score goals at the, in front of the goal. So, and that hasn't happened a lot, you know, especially not many goals, not multiple goals in, in a game. So, like I said, I don't think he has, because in, 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 in an optimal lineup setting, you are worried about some players that could break the slate by scoring a brace or a hat trick. Um, but um, on, on this slate, I just don't see anybody who can do that. Maybe the Crystal Palace guys, maybe, like Zaha or Gallagher, but even for Man U, I don't see anybody on that team to can, who can do that. Maybe Ronaldo, like, in, on a really special special night, but I just don't see that. So, but for GPP, I mean, he, yeah, I mean, you can take a chance on him. Um, and then you can take a chance on any of these attackers, Sancho or Elanga. Elanga is a youngster who who uh, subbed in and scored some goals. Um, he's been on, he's been on a two game scoring streak, but other other than the goals, he hasn't done much. Um, but in the midfield, I love Pogba. He's the most creative and uh, creative player who can create a lot of chances for them. Um, so I think I fully expect him to start. And Fred is very has been very aggressive um, in trying to uh, go up. Um, and scoring chances. So I like both of them actually here. I don't usually like the central midfielders like this, um, but for Man U, how they play, 
they don't really like to go up and down on the flank to cross the ball. They don't really do that. They should do that, but they don't do that. Um, so Papa and Fred, I like them. And then, like I said, Shaw has a high floor, just like Bruno Fernandez and Dallas for GPP. So if, if Rashford, Rashford, Marcus Rashford starts and plays a Belanga, I like him as well. He has a decent floor and then goal upside. So that's what I like for Man U. Um, and then for Watford, like I said, Saar, Lauza, Dennis. But it actually starts with, let's see, in the order of priority, I'd say Saar, Dennis, and Lauza. Just, you know, based on the combination of taking set pieces, but also at the same time, uh, goal upside, assist upside. And for GPP, you can always play Joshua King, but he, he doesn't really have any floor. And then um, maybe Fem Feminia and then Kamara, the fullbacks, they like to go up and down across the ball. So against the struggling Man U side, I think that's those are those pieces are definitely viable today. So anyway, so yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, I do think um, it's a very interesting slate. And as you can see, the odds have changed already. Um, actually, uh, when I wrote this, these game notes, uh, here, one second. Crystal Palace was at plus 100, but now it's at negative minus 110. So that's interesting. Lots of money coming in on Crystal Palace, which I, like I said, I think Crystal Palace is, has been in better form. So I think um, I think it may be wiser to play a lot of Crystal Palace guys today because Burnley also their defenses can be can be leaky. Um, I think Crystal Palace will have a lot of scoring opportunities. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting uh, matchup. And then um, I think I like that game, and then I like the Brentford versus Newcastle game where both teams to score. So I like I like some DFS pieces from that game as well. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any questions, um, let me know. Um, but if you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you don't mind. And then also um, I'll share my thoughts when the starters come out in about 45 minutes. So yeah, enjoy. Good luck.